Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back. Today we are going to talk about why your paint jobs might be wrinkling and shriveling up and doing all sorts of wacky stuff. So an unfortunate number of you have come to me uh, through various mediums and told me that, you know, you've tried to do a paint job typically with spray cans and it's, it's wrinkled up. It's kind of the paints pulled together and created these ridges and crackly lines and stuff. And you're wondering what the problem is. And honestly, it's a very difficult question to answer. I've seen some of the pictures. I've gone through some of the processes with you that you've used. It's a tough question because it doesn't always happen for the same reasons. But today we're going to talk about some of the reasons why this does happen. So this, this wrinkling effect or crazing, as we often call it, can come from a few different issues. One of which is a paint reaction. Now, before you say, oh, that's not the problem, maybe it's not. There are a couple of different ways that it happens. But one that I find very common is people are trying to use, you know, more than one type of paint. Maybe, for example, they're painting with spray cans and then they, they have this confused notion a lot of people have that lacquer is synonymous with clear coat so they go over it with a clear lacquer thinking that that just means a clear coat when the rest of their paint job is enamel lacquer is a completely different kind of paint and what happens the lacquer shrivels up and basically peels off and, and does some really weird stuff so one thing that you're going to find is if you're using a variety of paint you're going to have a lot more susceptibility to this crazy reaction that causes that crazing look now the crazing look is cool <laughs> To be honest, like if you're into that, it's neat. But the problem is it's not durable. It's not a, a proper finish. The, the adhesion isn't there. So even if it looks cool, that's an art piece now. That's not a functional, useful item anymore. Another reason that this happens is paint shrinkage. The paint will pull together as it shrinks. Often when you get paint shrinkage, what happens is it pulls apart and creates cracks instead. But sometimes you get that crazing in lieu of that. And that can be due to your temperature, most, most typically, you know, and, uh, and a number of other factors, really how heavy you've put it on and stuff like that. But paint does shrink, so you do have to be careful. And when you throw it on really heavy, you're creating a lot more room where there's more solvent in there to evaporate. So more product, if you will, more, yeah, more stuff is leaving as that evaporates which then reduces the volume there and causes that shrinkage. So be aware of that as well when you're doing your coating. Sometimes that crazing just comes from the paint shrinking because there's too much of it on there or it's too hot out or it didn't dry properly because it's too cold, but that's, that's not shrinkage. That's a different problem entirely. It is important to have a reasonable temperature when you're drying something. Sometimes you can force dry things with heat, but the kinds of paint that you do that with are not the kinds of paint that you're gonna end up getting this crazing with typically. So try and keep a standard type of room temperature or slightly above it when you're drying your paint and that should help. All right, our third and basically our final of the big three reasons why this crazing happens uh, is a solvent escape. And I know it sounds like I already said that in the form of shrinkage, but there's another version of this, and what happens is when you put your layer of paint underneath, because it's always going to be multi-layer, right? Sometimes you got your primer, you got your color, you got your clear coat, several layers of paint. You've got your layers underneath. If they don't dry properly, and your top layer does start to dry properly, then what happens is the solvents underneath try to escape. And in some cases, like with a lacquer or something, sometimes what they'll do is they'll create pinholes. But Alternatively, sometimes what they'll do is they'll create crazing. They're both horrible, but like sometimes with the pinholes, it's like, yeah, you won't see it from the street and people don't care as much. The crazing you will literally see from the street. So there are recoat times. There are specific ways to get, you know, get these paint jobs done. Uh, sticking within the same type of paint, which is important to avoid these reactions. But it, it's really important that you either follow those recoat times or that you go even safer. So let's say you've got a paint that you can recoat within 10 minutes. That's fine. Do your three coats. You're not then going to move directly to your clear coat probably because if you throw six on in a row, three coats of base coat and three coats of clear, then you've got a lot of wet paint and you're worried about shrinkage. If you let those three coats dry but not long enough and then you scuff and put on your clear, then you're worried about solvent escape. So 
you know, it doesn't hurt to go on the safe side. Put those three coats on, let it dry for two days, three days a week, then scuff it. All the solvent should basically be out of there at that point, and you should be safe to move on to your clear coat. There are always exceptions. You can have reactions to contamination. Sometimes your, your surface isn't, isn't perfectly clean. You can have, you know, there are a lot of situations that can bring about crazing. Personally, it's kind of difficult. I've been lucky in that I really haven't experienced it as a problem on my projects. So it's, <laughs> it's a little difficult to diagnose on occasion. What I might do one of these days is a couple experiments where I create it on purpose and then I show why it's happened and I do a side-by-side -side demo where I don't create it and we kind of see what the difference is, but it's tough to do that without an exaggerated set of circumstances and guarantee that I'm going to get a result that makes sense on camera. So for now, I'm stuck just explaining it. I hope you guys found that useful. Those are some of the reasons that crazing arises. Uh, if you can avoid creating those situations and maybe in a later video, we'll talk about more tips to avoid that. But if you can avoid creating those situations, you really shouldn't run into this issue too often. And if you do, well, let me know and I'll see what I can do to help. So as always, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did like it, and I ask this pretty much every time now, please feel free to give it a thumbs up so that YouTube is more likely to recommend it to other people and they will see it and hopefully benefit from it as well. Also, it helps me. Yeah, I, I, I wanna be popular, why not, right? So yeah, thanks for watching. Have a good one and I will see you guys next time.